In this video, we're going to have a look at a process that is called completing the square. And we complete the square with the intention of creating what we call perfect square trinomials. Okay, so we know that a trinomial is an algebraic expression that consists of three terms. In this case, we are looking at trinomials in the form of x squared plus bx plus c. And a perfect square is any number that has a pair of identical factors. So we say that a number like 9 is a perfect square because it has identical factors of 3 times 3. Okay, so if we look at these perfect square trinomials, we can see that they are perfect squares because the square root of the end term times by 2 gives us the middle term. So the square root of 1 is 1 multiplied by 2 is 2. The square root of 4 is 2 multiplied by 2 is 4. The square root of 9 is 3. Uh, square root of 9 is 3 multiplied by 2 gives us 6. So we can see that these are perfect square trinomials, so they will factorize into a binomial squared because a perfect square trinomial comes from a binomial squared. And I would like for you to pause the video and see if you can factorize each of those trinomials. Okay, so for the first one, we need to get an x squared, so we need an x times an x, and we need to get a positive 1 at the end, which is 1 times 1. In order for our outers and inners to add up to positive 2, it needs to be x plus 1 all squared in the brackets. The second one, x, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 4 is 2, we want to have a positive 4x, so therefore our outers and our inners both need to be positive. The next one, square root of x squared is x, square root of 9 is 3. We now need it to give us negative 6x, which means that our outers and our inners both need to be negative. And finally, the last one, the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 16 is 4, and it's negative because we need our outers and our inners to add up to negative 8x. Okay, so we now want to have a look and see if we can figure out how we would find this constant term at the end if it wasn't given or if we needed to complete the square. Because being able to factorize something into a bracket squared is quite a useful um, process. So if we just have a look, when we've got our last term and we want our middle term, we know that it's the square root of the last term times by 2. So if we apply that process in reverse, if we want to find out what our c value is that goes onto the end of our trinomial, it will be, instead of timesing by 2, we'll do the opposite, we'll divide b by 2, and instead of finding the square root, we will square that answer, because we now want to find the process going in the opposite direction. And if we just have a look and see if it works, over here, 2 divided by 2 squared, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. Over here, 4 divided by 2 squared is 2 squared, which is 4. Over here, 6 divided by 2, or negative 6 divided by 2, all squared. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, squared is positive 9. Over here, we have negative uh, 8 divided by 2, all squared. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. So we can see that this relationship will help us to find the constant that completes the square. Let's just check whether that works all of the time. So what happens if our trinomials have got a coefficient of x squared that is not positive 1? Let's just see if it still works. So let's first of all check that these all factorize, that there are perfect square trinomials. Okay, so the square root of 4x is 2x, the square root of 1 is 1. We need a positive 4x in the middle. And now let's just check. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. We're going to have two of those, which will give us 4x. And the positive 1 times positive 1 is positive 1. So these are indeed perfect square trinomials. So if we just factorize the rest very quickly. And 2x plus 4, all squared. Okay, now let's just check, does our little rule work? Is the c at the end equal to the b value divided by 2? Well, let's check. 4 divided by 2 squared, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4. If we check the next one, 8 divided by 2 all squared, 
That's 4 squared, which is 16. Already we can see that we are not getting the same value that, as what the constant is at the end of these trinomials. So when the coefficient of x squared is something other than positive 1, then our little rule of b over 2 all squared doesn't work. But if we take out the 4 as a common factor from each one, so if we want to make x squared have a coefficient of 1, we need to take out as a common factor what it's currently being multiplied by. So x squared, um, this is number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4, so number 1. That gives us x squared plus x plus a quarter. In number 2, if we take out the 4, we have x squared plus 2x plus 1. In number 3, if we take out the 4, we'll have x squared plus 3x plus 9 over 4. And in the final one, if we take out a common factor of 4, we will have x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now if we check whether our little rule works, so if we start over here, if we, take, if we look at the relationship between positive 1 and a quarter, if we take the 1, divide it by 2 and square it, yes, that does give us a quarter. Here, if we take the 2, divide it by 2 and square it, that does give us 1. Here, if we take the 3 divided by 2 and square it, we do get the 9 over 4. If we take the 4 and divide it by 2 and square it, we do get the positive 4 at the end. So when our trinomial has a coefficient of x squared that is not 1, you must take out whatever the coefficient of x squared is as a common factor so that you can then use the b divided by 2 squared method in order to find the number that completes the square. Let's have a look at some examples and hopefully that will make a little bit more sense to you. Okay, number one, we are asked to find the constant that completes the square and then factorize. So I'm not going to use an equal sign here because I'm going to add something into this expression. So I'm going to just say b squared minus 5b. If I want to know the term that completes the square, I need to take the coefficient of, this, the, of the linear term. In this case, the linear term is the 5b. I need to divide it by 2 and I need to square it. That will give us positive 25 over 4. So that is going to be the term that completes the square. And now we can factorize. We've created, we've completed the square, so we've created a perfect square trinomial. So we know that it's going to um, be a binomial squared. The square root of b squared is b. The square root of 25 over 4 is 5 over 2. And we need it to be negative in order to get a negative middle term. Okay. In number 2, before we can complete the square, we first need to take out the 3 as a common factor. Otherwise, we are not going to be able to use our coefficient of the linear term divided by 2 squared. So we're going to take out 3 as a common factor. So we're going to need to divide 4 by 3, because unfortunately 3 doesn't go exactly into 4. And now we can figure out what it is that we need to add to that in order to make it a perfect square. So... It's going to be 4 divided by 3. And now we need to divide that by 2. Rather than have fractions over fractions, I'm just going to write it as a division and square it. And dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half. 4 times 1 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. All squared. And that gives you 16 over 36. And you're very welcome to just pop that straight into your calculator and it will give you the 16 over 36 straight away. Okay, so now we need to factorize that. So the 3 will stay outside. We've created this to be a perfect square. It will be B. The sign in the middle will be positive because we need our outers and our inners to add up to a positive. And 16 over 36 square root is 4 over 6. Okay. There are some examples in your homework book to try on your own. So if you can pause the video here and try these two. It's exactly the same process. Find the constant that completes the square and then factorize. 
Okay, number one. So the coefficient of m squared is positive 1, so we can go right ahead here. Divide the coefficient of the middle term or the linear term by 2 and square it. That gives us 81 over 4. And that will now factorize into m plus 9 over 2 all squared. Number 2 is a little bit more difficult because we first need to take out a common factor of 6. 8 divided by 6 will simplify into 4 over 3. And we can now figure out what we need to um, add in. So it will be 4 over 3 times a half all squared. 4 over 3 times a half all squared will be 4 over 6 squared, which is 16 over 36. So it's the term that completes the square is 16 over 36. And that will now factorize into n. It will be a negative in the middle. And the square root of 16 over 36 is 4 over 6, all squared.